Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 21 of the chapter Chemical Bonding and Molecular Structure. I have been explaining the molecular orbital theory to you and we discussed the linear combination of atomic orbitals, how two atomic orbitals combine and they result in the formation of two molecular orbitals. One that is a bonding molecular orbital and the other that is an antibonding molecular orbital. And I also told you that just like in atomic orbitals uh, or in atoms, we know that the electrons when they fill up in the orbitals according to their increasing energy levels, they do so following the Aufbau's principle, the Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity and the Pauli exclusion principle. And in molecules also, we have similar energy levels and we can have an electronic configuration of molecules too and the filling up of these electrons is the electronic configuration of the molecules so what are the properties that depend on this configuration of the molecules we are going to study the those properties in this video so the topic of this video is electronic configuration and molecular behavior so what behavior of molecules can be assessed just by looking at the configuration of the molecular orbitals that you may obtain by the combination of those two atoms the first thing that we learn about uh, a molecule is from its electronic configuration that is the configuration of the molecule is the stability of molecules we know when two atomic orbitals combine, they result in the formation of a bonding molecular orbital and an antibonding molecular orbital. The number of electrons that are present in bonding molecular bonding molecular orbitals result in stability, while antibonding molecular orbitals are higher in energy and they lead to instability of a molecule. So it is understandable if the number of electrons in the bonding molecular orbitals is more than the number of electrons in the antibonding molecular orbital, the molecule should be stable. So we get an idea about the stability of a molecule just by calculating the number of bonding and the number of antibonding electrons. If the number of electrons in Nb is the number of electrons in bonding molecular orbitals and Na is the number of electrons in antibonding molecular, molecular orbitals. So if you have electrons more in bonding molecular orbitals, then bonding molecular orbitals would lead it to stability because in bonding molecular orbitals, the electrons are present between the two nuclei leading to attraction. So the more the number of electrons in the bonding molecular orbital and less in uh, antibonding would be a stable molecule. But if when you carry out the, uh, the configuration and you find that the number of electrons in antibonding molecular orbitals is greater than the number of electrons in bonding molecular orbitals, obviously the factor which is, uh, which is contributing towards instability is greater than the factor that is contributing towards stability. So obviously the molecule would be unstable. The second thing that you can calculate from the electronic configuration would be the bond order. Now that you know the number of electrons in the bonding molecular orbitals and the total number of electrons in the antibonding molecular orbital, half of the difference between these two, when we take bonding, half of number of electrons in bonding molecular orbitals minus number of electrons in antibonding molecular orbitals, this would give you the bond order. Again, what would you get from this? The bond order that you obtain, we had studied about bond order earlier also. Bond order, if it is 1, 2 or 3, it gives us an idea of the number of bonds. That is what we studied. But here, if you look at this, it will also give you an idea of the stability of the molecule. Because when we say bond order, we are saying bond order is number of bonding minus number of antibonding. So if you get a positive value of bond order, then the molecule should be stable. Again, you would get a positive value only when Nb is greater than Na. Right? So we say that the bond order is half of the difference between the bonding electrons in the bonding molecular orbitals minus the electrons in the antibonding molecular orbitals. So we say that if the bond order is positive, then the molecule exists or it is stable. While if a bond order is either zero or it is negative, then the molecule is unstable and it does not exist. Since we have not done electronic configuration as yet, let me take just a simple example of hydrogen and helium and explain these two points to you. 
hydrogen has one electron in its atom. So two atoms of hydrogen, when they combine, they have one electron in the 1s orbital of one hydrogen, one electron in the 1s orbital of the other hydrogen. Okay? So it will result in the formation of two orbitals, molecular orbitals, the bonding and the antibonding. Now what is the total number of electrons here? Two. So this is sigma 1s and this is sigma star 1s. Do you remember? Sigma 1s is the bonding 1s molecular orbital and sigma star 1s is the antibonding sigma 1s molecular orbital. This leads to unstability. Its energy is greater than that of 1s of both the hydrogens and this has lower energy than both. Therefore, this leads anything that's lower in energy leads to stability. So this is this leads to stability. So when you have two electrons and if you follow the off bounds principle, they should first occupy the orbital which is lowest in energy. So 1s is lowest in energy. So these two electrons would come here. Do you see? So now these two electrons are in bonding and in antibonding there is no electron because there were only two electrons in the atoms which had to occupy the molecular orbital. So this is what would the number of bonding electrons is 2 while number of antibonding is 0. Therefore would such a molecule exist? H2 molecule does it exist? Of course it does. And looking at this also we find that it does exist. If we had to calculate the bond order of hydrogen molecule. The bond order would be half of Nb minus Na. Na is 0 and Nb is 2. So half of 2 is 1. So we could get a bond order of 1 which means and what does 1 tell us? 1 bond order means a single bond. 2 bond order, bond order 2 means it's a double bond. Bond order 3 means it's a triple bond. So Nb minus Na for hydrogen molecule is 1. It means there is one single covalent bond between two hydrogen atoms. So its bond order would be 1 and such a molecule since it's a positive plus 1 is a positive value therefore this molecule exists. On the other hand let us assume it was not hydrogen it was helium. Now helium has two electrons in 1s orbital right. So now if we fill up these now we have four electrons to be filled up. So two would go to 1s sigma 1s and two electrons would go to sigma star 1s. Now the number of Nb is equal to Na. So the stability, the portion contributing, the number of electrons contributing towards stability is equal to the number of electrons which are contributing towards instability. So what is the bond order? Would this be stable? No, it would not be. You can see even from the bond order, half of 2 minus 2 is 0. So this has a bond order of 0. Bond order 0 means there is no bond existent between them. So such a molecule, we know HE2 as a molecule does not exist. Right? So the bond order or the stability of molecules can be calculated from the number of electrons in the bonding molecular orbitals and number of electrons in the antibonding molecular orbitals. The third point is the nature of the bond, which is related to the bond order. As I told you, that if the bond order is 1, it means that there is one covalent bond between the two atoms. If the bond order you calculate to be 2, it means there's a double bond. If the bond order is 3, it means there's a triple bond between the two atoms. Then bond length further depends on this. Bond length also depends on the bond order. Larger the bond order, the greater is the number of bonds. And as you have one bond between two atoms, this is the distance, when this two atoms have a second bond, they come closer. So a double bond is shorter than a single bond between two atoms. And a triple bond is the shortest. So bond length depends on the bond order. The greater the bond order, shorter would be the bond length. And there's another thing that depends on or that you could calculate from the or you could get an idea just from the electronic configuration. You can get the idea of the magnetic nature of the molecule. Do you know that magnetic nature of a molecule is due to electrons that are unpaired? If orbitals are half filled, then these electrons are not being balanced by the other electron. You remember? When you have two electrons in an orbital, one has a positive spin and the other has a negative magnetic spin. So they both kind of cancel each other. But if you have singly 
occupied orbitals. These electrons that singly occupy orbitals, they tend to get affected by magnetic field. So what do we see from the electronic configuration? That if all the molecular orbitals are doubly occupied, that means that all electrons are paired in the molecular orbitals, then the molecule is diamagnetic in nature. Diamagnetic is a substance that, rep that is kind of repelled by your magnet. So anything, any molecular orbital that has uh, all paired electrons would be diamagnetic in nature, which means that it would be weakly repelled by magnets. And if the molecular, if you have a molecule and you see its electronic configuration and it has singly occupied orbitals, orbitals in which only one electron is present, then you would find that such a molecule would be paramagnetic in nature. So you can assess the magnetic paramagnetic. What is paramagnetic? A substance that is attracted, that starts behaving magnetic or is attracted to the magnet in the presence of a magnet. But when you remove the magnet, it might go back to being what non-magnetic. But in the presence of a magnet, it gets attracted to the magnet. So these are things and when you actually do the configurations and you solve these uh, and you try to judge their properties, you would find that they are quite right. So that gives you an indication that molecular orbital theory is, uh, uh, is by far the best theory that has been given by scientists. So these were, these were the properties or man, uh, the behavior of molecules based on electronic configuration of these molecules. So in the next video, we are going to start studying how to do that, how to write the electronic configuration, to know the energy levels, how they are, and how would we fill those, uh, fill electrons in these energy levels following the three rules, that is the off bounds principle, the Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity, and the Pauli exclusion principle. I repeat this again and again so that you always have these three rules in your mind when you are filling up the electrons. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.